I will briefly present the Elan tool, um, many of which uh, many of you might already be aware of the tool, but some not. And uh, I particularly would like to, to look on it on an angle from oral, oral history. So that's a tool not offered by Clarin as a whole, but by one of the Clarin centers. And I think this is what holds for many parts of the Clarin tools and, and components. They are offered by individual consortia in, in individual um, uh, centers. So I will br very briefly introduce it, uh, give some overview of the basic features, some advanced features which might be interesting for us, some desiderata also for us, and then focus on, on oral history, one or two slides for each, so it's really short. It is a Elan is a major tool, it's already 15 years in, in development at the Max Planck Institute for Psycholinguistics in Nijmegen and by several partners like the Radboud University also in, in Nijmegen. It has for now, now for more than 10 years, Hans Lutjes as the main developer, which is a very lucky uh, uh, circumstance, so you have continuity uh, and, and one developer knowing it all, but also if he would go away one day then uh, it would be very hard for somebody else to take it over. It has been used intensively first in the context of language documentation, so going out to very small communities and recording culture and, and language uh, from small communities around the world. This is how I came to the whole enterprise and then further on to Clarion as well. But also uh, it was used in language acquisition studies where you have oral and also video data in the Childers project at the Max Planck Institute and so forth. And more recently, is I think Ilan in particular has boosted the uh, gesture studies and the study of sign language, which is now uh, uh, made the material much more accessible uh, to spot individual words or sentences in large recordings uh, than it was before. Since then, we have seen Elan being applied even in, in physics. So physical experiments have been annotated and presented uh, with Elan. So somebody told us from, from other conferences, I saw Elan, but it was in a completely different context. So it is actually a quite popular tool, not only for uh, linguistics. That's a, web, that's a screenshot in the presentation, which will be online. You can click on that, and you can go to the website itself, where you have demo materials, the manual, and so forth and so forth. So so what does it do, basically? It is a tool for annotation and mainly for manual annotation of audio and video recordings. So very little automatic functionality so far, but for doing manual annotation, I think it is a tool which is on the state of the art, making it really easy to transcribe, translate, and further annotate large amount of audio and video data. It allows to annotate even several video streams at the same time, which might be good for interviews if you have two cameras or uh, if, you, uh, if you have an experiment setting where you would like to see the three dimensions and so forth, so this is uh, easily possible. You can have an unlimited number of tiers for annotating all kind of, of information. So the configuration speaks of linguistic types, but as I said, this goes far beyond of linguistics. All the para information can be given, tags and so forth and so forth. These tiers can be repeated for an unlimited numbers of participants. They are ordered in a hierarchy. So for instance, if you have time marks, so you say in this stretch there's a sentence, you don't have to identify the same time marks in the dependent tiers, but they are given already. So it, it, uh, it, it allows you to, to um, be quicker in identifying interesting uh, um, events and to refer to, to uh, previous tiers. There are many different input methods. This is interesting for linguists. So you can have phonetic transcription. You can even use uh, Chinese uh, letters, Arabic, and so forth and so forth. Um, and you can then search in the data, even for regular expressions, over several tiers. So I would like to have all occurrences of this and this verb with that and that part of speech, if you have that information coded in your annotation. It is quite flexible also when it comes to importing and exporting formats, so XML in several formats, HTML, but also PDF for printing and so forth and so forth. What is a tier? Please. A tier is a line of annotation. So you might have one tier for the transcription, one tier for a, pho a phonetic transcription, for instance, one tier for a translation. So it's one line of, of information. Sorry. 
but if I didn't make that clear. So here you have many tiers, and you see that they are related one to another uh, in an hierarchical way, so that this tier, for instance, subdivides the information in the previous tiers, but it doesn't go beyond the limit. So, so once you have identified a sentence, you don't have to do that a second time. And here you have tiers for even gestures within this, um, within this uh, video where um, an ex explanation of a certain route uh, is, is, is done. This here is an example from sign language. And those are the two example sentences or example sets that you can download together with a tool uh, on, the, on the website, where you see two videos, one with a, a detail of the, of the face expression and the other for the general ge uh, um, gestures. I will skip the different type of tiers because they're not so relevant here. I said already that you can refer to them. This here um, is a screenshot which looks similar, but it is not of Elan itself, but, but of the online tool Annex, which is closely related to Elan. So this is the way how Elan data can be made online available uh, once, once you uploaded them in, in, in an archive. So this year, actually, I prepared. So this is an example from the Avicii corpus. This is, by the way, this is why I selected this, uh, the, the only session which is really an oral history session in the Avicii corpus, which I compiled in the early 2000s. So here I set three Avicii speakers in front of an ethnography, a 30-year-old ethnography with many pictures. And I asked them to comment on these old pictures from older people and from older artifacts and so on. Uh, and, and so forth. And you see here that the transcription is immediately aligned uh, with the audio and video. So you can focus on certain, OK, I don't get the audio despite having put it in. Yeah, probably a configuration problem in my computer. Anyway, so you see that, that, that it is aligned, that you see the video together with the annotation at the, at the same time. OK. So um, what is relevant for oral history is that it is really made very easy to segment an audio or video file into, for instance, sentences or topics or shorter units, whatever you have, um, intonation units. And there's a transcription mode which allows you in columns to make a transcription here and translation into another language there, notes in a third column, and, and you hear the, the stretch of that audio or video piece immediately when you start to, to, uh, to annotate. Um, what is perhaps even more interesting in our context is that Elan now can interact with online services offered by certain clarion centers. And one of the most interesting onla uh, online services is the automatic alignment of pre-existing transcriptions with audio. And that works not only for some major languages when, when they are trained, it works really well, but it works even out of the box for not yet trained languages as long as a transcription is, is quite close to the original audio signal. Uh, at least text revealed, uh, tests revealed that that uh, might, might work and, and with a little bit of training material that might be adapted to many, many languages. So I think this community is one where it is quite common to have transcriptions just as text and you have the audio and video. And I hear from several of you, listen more to the examples, look at them, uh, uh, go to the original material. So having an, an, an Elan file allows you to go to a certain sentence in the transcription and then look at the performance of that sentence in the original material really easily. So if it, even if you have the transcription separately, you can align them with Elan and then use it for going directly to the relevant parts in the audio and, and video signal. You can also use uh, uh, online services to recognize silent versus speech or other noise versus speech to differentiate between different speakers and so on. Uh, there have been tools developed and Elan can plug them in, so to say. Um, and also for gesture analysis and so forth, uh, you can identify movement of hands and heads of at least two speakers, given that the recording is in a quite clear environment. Um, it works rather it works rather well. Elan also is a format which within Clarin is recognized by a number of centers and can be plugged into 
uh, workflow uh, uh, services so that it can be used in order to uh, uh, generate, for instance, named entity recognition on the basis of a, of a transcript and so on. There are several desiderata from a linguistic point of view, but from an oral history point of view, um, I think one of the thing, uh, things which, uh, where, where we need something in order to be more useful for, for oral history is that some standardization might be needed uh, when it comes to labeling what kind of information goes into which tier, right? Because everybody creates their own tiers for their own needs, and that might be something that you're already struggling with. So Ilan doesn't give you anything out of the box in order to help, but you can label the tiers however you like. So there, I guess, something like a template or so would really help so that people could agree on, I would like to have a transcript, and then I would like to have a note or a tag tier, and so forth, and so forth. But also within a single tier, I think we need some conventions um, how to abbreviate certain uh, uh, terms or, or what other conventions to use. Do you, do you use uh, conversation analysis uh, transcripts or, or what are other forms of, of standardizing it so that it can be um, searched over several corpora uh, um, in, in, in an archive. Independent of Elan, of course, we really would like to have an automatic transcription speech recognition for arbitrary languages uh, better working than the tools that we have now. And also, as we had in the breakout session, also the, the other follow-up uh, uh, natural language processing tools like named entity recognition, topic extraction, that that work with oral data, uh, that, that is really something where Elan could, could uh, profit from. So, my summary for oral history, I think this is it might be a tool that helps to create large amounts of transcriptions, translations, add notes, tag certain relevant areas, create chapters, and so forth and so forth. So make the original recordings uh, better accessible. I think um, oral history can make use from the advanced feature features, the, the optimized features like the alignment of, of existing transcripts. And yeah, we, we have to, to figure out what are the kind of annotations that oral history research usually creates, needs, would like to see in Elan. Perhaps pre, uh, prepare a template so that Elan is out of the box usable for interviews, for oral history material. And uh, yeah, I guess there are some technical possibilities to enhance Elan for this particular community, and we already had the discussion of a certain metadata profile which is outside Elan, but which would plug in with the use of Elan. So that was my short presentation of this tool uh, in, this, in this context of oral history research. <laughs>